Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at how to get MBS up and running, especially on the Linux side. There is a previous video in my channel, um, which is more for Windows users uh, on how to get uh, Windows uh, MBS up and running on Windows. But uh, when Linux is sufficiently different that certain things have to be done differently. And so we're going to be looking at doing this today. One thing is that when it comes to Linux, I'm more of a of a server person, less of a Linux desktop uh, person. Yes, I do have a couple of laptops with Linux running on them um, for when I travel so I can do uh, stuff because obviously developing is much more, um, you're much more at home developing on Linux than on Windows. I'm firmly convinced of that. Linux is made by developers for developers and TCP IP and C and Unix are kind of all this trilogy is kind of, or a trinity, uh, all kind of goes hand in hand. Whereas in Windows, it's um, uh, it's it's uh, it, it's different. And so today we're going to be looking at how to install uh, MVS and to get it up and running on a Linux server. Which means I will still be using my Windows desktop to connect to it. And I think this is how most people want to run MVS because MVS is obviously a server environment itself and not something something you would run. All day long or for days or weeks on a, on the laptop, MBS can once you IPL or boot MBS, it will stay up and running for years if if you wanted to, and so it's a server environment. As such, all be installing on a Linux server. So um, before we get to how to install everything, let's look a little bit on the hardware you will need, and for that, I think using this ESX. Uh, I environment that I have here, a VMware ESX environment, will be a very good place to show what we need so um there's a ready-made linux vm i i have always a batch of them ready made so that if i need um, a vm on the quick for linux i already have one made uh, and what all i do is just keep cloning those um again and next so this is my server 203 so i could make now in vm2 um and this way i always have a fresh batch um of this available um, so, um, put this on a non SSD for the time being, and there we go. And so, um, in a in a, just a few uh, moments, I will have a copy of this uh, Linux virtual machine, um, so that I can now uh, go about um, changing this one. So, okay, this is almost ready. Seventy percent, seventy-seven. 79, 86, 93, boom. And this is not even SSD, this is normal disk, but it's very fast. I have the server here, which is um, a Proline ML350 Gen 9. Um, I would advise anybody wanting to do uh, ESXi at home to either go with Intel Nook machines, they're very small, very fast with SSD disks, if you want to have a little beefier environment, go with an ML, M, uh, HP ProLine ML350. Um, Gen 9s are kind of expensive still, but have very fast processors. But uh, you can go with the Gen 7. They're still plenty, plenty good, or Gen 8 even. The Gen 8 machines, are, Generation 8 machines are very good. They're very cheap. And if you put um, 128 to 256 gig of RAM onto those and um, four or five disks in a RAID array, you can go a long way with these machines. Um, so this is for people who want to build a home lab. Um, so let's see what we need in terms of resources for getting MBS uh, 3.8 running. Obviously we'll be doing TK4 because this is, in my opinion, the best way, the best experience if you want an MBS. Take the TK4 distribution. Uh, let's look at edit settings. So this machine is with four gigabytes and two CPUs, which I think is way too much. Um, so this doesn't really need more than one gigabyte of RAM uh, because our MBS can only address 16 megabytes of memory anyway. So we can even do, um, yeah, we could probably even do 512 megabytes. Um, okay, let's do half a gig because we really don't need more than that. On the, and we only need one CPU. Um, that's, that's as, that's as, uh, as low as it goes into resources for getting MBS up and running, um, you really don't need a lot of resources. You can do this on a very old computer if you wanted to. 
I won't be using the video card at all, so I'm not going to do anything here. Um, in terms of um, hard drive, I have here a 80 gigabytes um, disk, which is way too much. I, I think you could get by with six or eight gigabytes, uh, but this is already defined, and so we're not going to change this now for now. Uh, we can try maybe to change it, but I, I don't know if this will boot anymore. Uh, let's leave it as it was. Anyway, it will not take all this space because it's thinly provisioned, meaning it only takes a space on the disk that you actually use inside the virtual machine. So this is a smaller virtual machine as I can probably, as I can imagine. Um, let's get this started. Um, open console. And let's IPL this virtual machine. Okay, um, I use Ubuntu, by the way, for most of my work. Uh, you could also use Debian. Um, I know a lot of people use uh, Red Hat or CentOS or uh, uh, Fedora. Um, I, I know Fedora and uh, Red Hat Linux very, very well. And some of the viewers of this video channel know why, but um, I, I think Debian and Ubuntu is just a much better environment. So um, I log in here as root. Obviously, I would never advise you to log in uh, to use root. Uh, it's much better to use a normal user and then sudo whenever you need but i'm going to cut a few corners here so be root and it will be happier uh, okay so we have a very small virtual machine here with 512 gigabytes of ram and uh, one cpu let's know take note of the ip address oops of this machine so it's 114 so you can see here so now i start and this is kind of important. Um, I SSH into, into the machine. And you are, obviously, if you use real hardware, you will be on the console, so you will not need to do an SSH. But if you use virtual environments, like I would think probably 50, 75% of this channel would, um, then uh, log in now to, the, to your virtual machine with, um, with uh, S, with, uh, I use Putty here, but anything you like oh, oh what happened here mm, I'm probably not using the correct address um, this is 114 oh I think I know what's happening uh, service SSH start probably too late now I'll uh, probably have to restart this session new session and then we can also make the fonts maybe a little bigger uh, we have font size uh, let's make it 20 or maybe even 22 okay open why is this not working maybe I have to change the Okay, let's give this a new address. Can we ping the outside world? Yes, we can. Okay, so let's try this just again. Appearance. And session. Okay. Still not working. What is the matter? Oh, we may not have root enabled. Okay, let's go enable root. So this is always good in these videos. I do things, um, yeah, that's the reason. So that um, I find errors, so you don't have to find those errors. So here you wanna have yes. I wanna have permit root login, service, restart. Uh, but it's probably too late for yeah for this session yeah we have to start a new session and that's the shortcoming of um, that's what I don't like so much about about putty that it doesn't really start a dialogue until you give it the password and it's faking that first dialogue okay let's try again and session it will work now okay yeah, so we're in. 
Uh, we can now close this session. It's still running obviously here on, as a virtual machine. Um, okay, so uh, as in my previous video in MBS for Beginners, I advocated installing Hercules um, on the machine. And some people wrote to me and said, yeah, but when you download TK4, it already has a Hercules inside it. Yes. And I said, yeah, that's true, but you may want to do more than just MBS. Maybe you want to run DOS VSE. Maybe you want to run uh, MTS. I have a whole video about this, just three or four videos before this one. Uh, maybe you want to run um, uh, uh, Music SP. Maybe you want to run uh, some other, uh, maybe VM370. And so uh, a lot of the other distributions require you to have Hercules pre-installed. Even though TK4, the MBS 3.8 distribution we're going to be using, uh, comes with its own Hercules inside. And so uh, some people said it's a, du you know, it's a duplication. And I say it's not really. Um, you may need it anyway. And it only takes a couple of seconds. So let's get into it. So the, first, the three steps, uh, steps to get um, MBS up and running on Linux are the following. Um, install, let's do like this, optionally, install Hercules, download and unzip uh, TK4 MBS 3.8 from ETH website, uh, download um, and that's about it. Uh, these are really the only two steps, and um, and uh, we will be connecting then afterwards to MBS with from within Windows with uh, with a very nice terminal emulator. So use Windows based uh, Vista uh, TN3270 terminal emulator to connect to MBS. Okay. So these are the three steps. I'm going to do them now. Um, let's first uh, get started with doing an app. If you're on Debian or on uh, on Ubuntu, you do an apt update always before you install any packages. Okay, this is already up to date because I freshly installed it. apt install Hercules. And if you want to time it, you'll see how quickly you install Hercules here. Three, four, five, about five or six seconds. And so we get um, Hercules 3.12 installed in just about five seconds. In Windows, it would take about, if you want to also configure the path variable, I would say at the very least three, four minutes. Um, this is the power of Linux. I have Hercules here already up and running. Okay, so now the next step is obtain and install the TK4 package. Um, so, um, we go to a website called, um, you just type in Google, ETH TK4 MBS 3.8. Okay, ETH TK4 MBS 3.8. If you do that, you'll land on this website. You, from this website, you go and install, you go to this last um, uh, download over here called TK4 1.00 current zip, which is the same as update 8, but if you go to current, you'll always get the latest version. And there's no need to go to anything below um, the current version. So you don't actually download it here. And that's what happens if you click on it. Okay, so uh, uh, cancel. What you do is you right mouse click and say copy link address. And now that we've done this, we do here W get and the copy and paste uh, with the right mouse click the link. And this will start downloading. And this, it's about 250 megabytes. This will take a couple of, uh, maybe a minute or two. I have a slow internet connection here at home. Only like, I think 30, 35 megabit. Um, I could get, I guess 50, I think they said I could get 50 or 100 megabit for uh, $50 more per month, but I don't really need 70 megabit. I don't need 50 megabit either. Uh, if I have to do anything that requires a much faster connection, I usually put it on an S on a USB drive first, and then upload it from the office or download from the office and bring it home. Um, that's I get four, what, 3.5 megabytes per second. That's times eight, so that's about 20, 
uh, I would say about 20, 30 megabits per second. That's my connection. Okay, so this is done. Now, um, if I unzip this right now, it will create all subfolders in the root uh, home directory. And that, I don't want that. So usually I do like make directory MVS 38, move the TK4 zip file to MVS 3.8 into this directory. Um, so let's go in there. And now you can unzip it TK4. Okay, um, and <laughs> this is uh, really all there is to it right now. Now the next step is, and that's very important folks, um, uh, please bear with me before you do anything, go to CD unattended, go to subdirectory, and here you set console mode, set console mode, execute this, dot slash console mode. You don't have to do anything, just press enter again, and this enables the console the Hercules Art Console, which you do want to enable because it allows you to give commands to MVS. Otherwise, it's all going to be in, in demon mode, which is fully automated, but you can still talk to the console, but you have to open up a web browser. It's more complicated. So just bear with me. Believe me, it's much better if you just set uh, console mode. You go one level up again. So we're still inside MVS 3.8. And now we start with MVS dot slash MVS. And as I said before, oh, actually we can still stop it. Okay. Uh, if you want to look briefly at this directory that we just unzipped, there is a couple of subdirectors. Conf includes all the uh, configuration files for Hercules. Uh, the main one would be this one. Okay, this is uh, where we change the main uh, configuration. Let's say I want to change the configuration file, the CPU serial number to uh, okay, so that I'm going to do that. So later on, we can go in and check if it actually read this configuration file. Um, so that this is that. Then we have uh, DASD is where we have all the images of uh, of the uh, disks, which of course in MVS world in the mainframe world are called DASDs. That's why you see here DASD, direct attached storage device. Uh, there's about 25 disks here. Don't touch any of that. Um, then we have doc will be all the documentation, uh, which I invite you to read. And then we have directory called Hercules. And inside here, we have um, the binaries for Hercules. So we, when, when I start Hercules here, I'm not going to be running the Hercules we just installed, which we, is still good to install because we may want to use it to run VM370 or something else but it actually uses the one that comes with it. Um, and Jürgen Winkelmann, the um, maintainer of TK4, has a very s s smart set of scripts that determines what is the architecture I'm running. So when, whenever I start MBS, the MBS command, it knows I'm running on Linux. So then it goes to Linux, and then it find, tries to find out if I'm running Linux on 32-bit, in 64-bit, or on the ARM processor, which would be something like the Raspberry or the ARM processor with a software float support and not a hardware soft float support. It's smart enough to find out all that. And then it knows that in this case, I'm running 64-bit and goes in here and goes the, and then here it finds the Hercules command. Um, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're going to be executing in this particular case because we have a 64-bit Ubuntu installed. Um, 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 then we have JCL is where we keep some uh, JCLs we want to run. Um, there is a dummy here. Let me see what this is. Nothing. Um, then we have uh, local configuration, local scripts, the log files, the during execution, all log files will be written to virtual printers inside this directory. We have the car punch, the printer directory, well, the three printers will be printing to, the reader directory and tapes um, and the unattended we just explained so that's it so let's get started um, by typing dot slash mbs and if you press the escape button you can switch between the console view of the hardware okay uh, let's make this as big as we can okay 
Um, and if I press, and then we hear, we see all the devices here on the right side. If I press escape again, we see the console. So for instance, if I want to know the time that MBS they can tell me, I, I type slash DT. Slash means this is a, con a command not for Hercules, it's a command for M MBS. D stands for display, T for time. Um, oops, D and then it shows me the time. So right now, uh, MVS is already up and running. It's still IPLing, but I can do display A minus all active uh, jobs, and it shows me all these uh, jobs are already running here on the system. Um, so now um, we know that the uh, IP of the machine is 114, 192.168.1.114, and so I'm gonna um, uh, start my terminal emulator on Windows and point it to port 3270. And this is very important, folks. So a lot of people get stuck in this step. I don't know for what reason. Um, of course, um, Hercules is a, is a socket application and it needs, it has a, an IP address, which is, this address here and it must have a port address and this is the port address 3270 put this in and be connected instantly from my desktop here which is what you're seeing to the virtual machine running here on ESXi on this server um, it will connect to this instance here and you can see immediately that Hercules senses that somebody connected and prints here a log message so we're not connected to Hercules and um, Hercules is uh, MBS is up and running, and we are connected to, uh, out to VTAM, which is this net job here running. That's VTAM. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people I know or heard what this is. This is the telecommunication software in MBS. And if we press enter, uh, it will ask us to connect. So we put in Herc01. The password is see you later. Okay, I will spell it out here. The password is see you later. Okay, this one. Um, so that's the password. I press enter and we log in for the first time. Okay, that's how easy it is. We could have all done everything I've just said in probably less than a minute. Um, so now before we go, we go to um, option three. And let's see if we can get the CPU serial number, which we had changed in the configuration directory, if you remember, to 999611. And yes, here it is, it picked it up. It says when we IPL'd, it says we use a HERG01 on terminal so-and-so. Uh, if, you, if you press G, get a graphical display of the activity, of which there's almost none, obviously, since nobody else is logged in and nothing else is running. So let's go and launch a COBOL job uh, most people will be doing COBOL, obviously. Um, let's use, there's two productivity environments. One is RFE, and the second one is called RPF. I suggest you waste no time with RPF. It's okay, it was good for the beginning 10 years ago when people started to run MBS on an emulator, but RFE, um, a tool written by Greg Price over the last 20 years, is just amazing. Uh, so use that, number one. Let's go to 3.4, which is the utilities to list data sets. Data sets is a mainframe name for files. Put in sys2.jcl.lib. Lib means library, like a subdirectory. Let's edit it with E. Let's go and find a COBOL job. Let's take the third one, because it's a little bit more complicated job, because it uses an assembler routine to dynamically allocate memory. Um, because COBOL at that stage didn't have dynamic memory support. Uh, please do as I say here, herc01co for COBOL. Make sure it's uppercase. I type UC here on this side of the editor to make it uppercase. And then, very important, change to message class H. And no need to change anything else. Um, here's your First of all, the assembler, which does memory allocation. And then we have the COBOL, which calls the assembler every time it needs to allocate memory. Very simple. Uh, let's run it with 9,999. We'll look for all prime numbers up to 10,000. 
minus one. Um, let's see how this goes. So now we submit it, type submit here. Job 0001 launched. So the very first job launched and ran without errors. Otherwise we'd have seen it here in the log. Let's go back to the terminal. Um, let's go back out again. F3 always takes you one level up. Now let's type three, four utilities. And then eight for output viewer. We could also have type 3.8, but you know I just wanted to show you. And then we take we type here select and we looked at the return codes, the all zero, the assembler assembled with zero, COBOL compiled with zero, and it ran with zero problems. Um, here's the should have somewhere. Okay, this is the yeah, here's the output. All right, so this is as simple as it is. Um, everything else that you can do with MBS, you would have to watch some of the other 50 videos I have in this channel. Um, each one of them explains a different aspect of running a mainframe operating system. And I suggest you watch as many of them as possible. Uh, go to the earliest ones and then work yourself up. So start with M1. Each video has a number attached to it at the end of the description of the video, of the title. So start with M1 and move up towards M50. By the time you arrive to this video, which is M50, I'm sure you have become an MBS expert and had a lot of fun doing that. All the software is, even though it's, um, well, almost 40 years old, uh, it's still very much uh, viable, very good software. Jurgen, the maintainer, of uh, TK4 has added a lot of extensions to it. Uh, if you watch in one of the videos I've made, how to get data in and out of MBS, it explains that there's even TCP IP installed on this machine, which of course didn't even exist yet in this form 40 years ago. So this is a very viable, very uh, modern version of an mframe operating system. The only limitation is it's 24 bit, which means we can only address 16 megabytes of RAM, but that's much, much, much more than you think it is in a, in a mainframe world and most of the things you can do with 24 bit um, you will rarely hit a, a problem here with memory addressing um, i used to work on a mainframe about 35 years ago that had only 16 megabytes of ram only one cpu had about 3,000 people doing online work on terminals and about 100 tso programmers with a batch environment as well as well as test and development and production environment all in one machine and we all got along just fine um, so 60 megabytes is a lot um, so this is for a very first uh, run how to get up and start up and running with MBS on Linux um, if you want to have a little bit more knowledge about the terminology etc watch also I would I invite you to view the video called MBS 38 for beginners on Windows which is I think M45 or 44 or 46 one of those i will have links in the description below this video and so if you're done once you're done playing with this if you want to shut it down gracefully uh, what you do here you go in and say shut down and log off immediately so that your terminal becomes free again you can close this terminal now as you can see um, mbs realized that you wanted to shut it down it gives you a couple of log off uh, requests to all the online users of which there's only us left and you can see that it will start to go down soon and uh, once it's finished it will uh, shut down hercules and go back to the linux uh, shell and that's about it um, as you can see it's going down now we'll wait until this is done to have a graceful ending to this video i like to leave things open up in the middle or left open in the middle uh, you can see here, this shows you the instruction count, about 220 million instructions executed so far. MIPS is million instructions per second, and this is IOs per second. How many input outputs it's doing per second. As you can see here, it's quite a bit, hundreds of input outputs, and it's running about uh, 0. Point, what is it, about a megabit, a, mega, a, a MIPS per second. Okay, this is going down gracefully. Let's switch here to the console view. By the way, here you see the G is in yellow, means if I press G, I see the general registers. If I say, press on C, I see the control registers. 
this FOB floating point registers, these are all the devices with the unit number here. For instance, this is a unit number for tape and this is the model. Um, we have printer here, 00E printer, which prints to a directory called PRT and to, to a file on Linux called PRT00E. Um, we're going to go in a second. As soon as this is finished, we're going to go look at the printouts. Okay, JS2 ended. That's very good. We're almost down. If you have any questions, by the way, please feel free to post questions and ask comments below this video. I read the comments every day and I'm sure I'll be answering. Okay, this is done. Um, now let's go to the print directory and let's look at... Oh, there is no output here. I'm sure there's some output here. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Beautiful. Win uh, mainframe output. This is PSP. Yeah, these are system jobs running at uh, IPL time. It just shows us what it did. This is these are all here. Just two messages. Yeah. So these all ran perfectly. Okay. Um, I hope you had fun watching this uh, anniversary version video because this is video number M50, M stands for Moshix, and uh, I've, had done, I've had fun uh, producing these videos over the last year, um, and I'll continue to make more. I have lots of ideas for other videos. If you like this video, please press uh, on the thumbs up button, and I urge you to consider subscribing to this channel so you can get the notifications of future videos, and I hope to see you around this channel again for my next video. Thank you very much for all the support over the last 50 videos. Thank you and goodbye.